Hi guys, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So I'm here with Mark Gilbert, who's visiting me today. Um, I'm very privileged to uh, have you over. Thank you for coming to see me. It's a pleasure. And he also agreed, and this is where you, you can thank him, he also agreed to have some chats on camera. Um, so first of all, who is Mark? Um, well, anybody who has been to Fight Camp will know Mark. Um, Mark Gilbert's been a regular of Fight Camp for at least 10 years, yep. um, I think, and uh, we're going into our 13th year, I think it is this year. And um, so Mark's very well known as a very competent tournament fighter um, and also an instructor as well. He's most well known for instructing the uh, melee fighting, uh, both for the sort of competitive side, running the melee tournament that we have now as an annual feature at Fight Camp, but also uh, kind of running games, melee games, as a, a, you know, as a training exercise as well. And melee fighting is something which tends to get overlooked in HEMA quite fundamentally because it's not something that is often seen as HEMA because there is, there's no real sources for it. We have treatises and manuals talking about sort of wider scale battle tactics, you know, sort of Roman period stuff and even Byzantine and uh, Turkish and Persian, all sorts of other kind of battle wide tactics, but not so much small group, you know, how does, how does a group of five people fight another group of five people? And I very much feel that this is part of um, HEMA. Um, now, Mark's background is um, predominantly in the past has been in um, LARP or live action role play. So first of all, um, what is LARP and how does it contrast to HEMA? Okay, so, so first of all, uh, LARP has a, a number of guises, essentially, uh, and really live action role play is a mechanism for representing uh, a period in history or, or, or a cool film or, or, or something like that. Um, so really, it has a rule system which enables people to represent having a certain amount of hits in a battle, um, having potions that can enhance your abilities uh, and some systems um, which might be likened to um, Lord of the Rings might have spells and, and all sorts like that. And that Lord of the Rings style live roleplay tends to be the one that has uh, predominance um, in, in the UK in, in terms of a type of system. And probably in the US as well. I, I, I would, yeah, I, yeah I, I would think so. However, there are really some significant different types of, uh, of LARP. One being live, live action horror, um, uh, HP Lovecraft or, or, or something like that based on that, or werewolves and vampires, etc. And there also are things like pirate roleplay and more and more nowadays people are also doing um, what are what might be termed more historical um, inspired um, live action role plays as well. And I think recently there's also been a growth in kind of, because um, there's airsofting, I guess a lot of you will know that airsoft is essentially using airsoft guns a bit like paintballing and there is a kind of crossover as well between airsoft and laughing isn't there? There's a lot of people doing zombie based stuff and things like that. So Yeah re really the, the weapons you use in live role play are, are just a tool to be able to achieve something. So actually there are also um, LARP based events which use airsoft. So there's, there's a number of post-apocalyptic kind of events that are using LARP safe weapons, so the, the foam and latex weapons, um, and also using airsoft to represent uh, guns within a post-apocalyptic mm. kind of setting. So that, I mean, in terms of the safety wise, LARP weapons tend to be pretty safe if you're sensible. And then for the events that you've got the um, airsoft, people are having to wear either mesh goggles or like the skiing type goggles in, mm. in order to stop people being blinded, um, potentially being blinded in those situations. Now I know that obviously because LARP grew out of uh, tabletop wargaming, grew out of D&D &D essentially, didn't it? And um, <coughs> naturally they're going to be people who are more in LARP for the role playing side and yes. they're going to be um, people who are more into it for the fighting side. And I think that um, from what I've seen over the years, LARP tends to get uh, branded with one <coughs> type of stamp by people who aren't in LARP and they don't necessarily recognise that actually there's a lot of people uh, or perhaps a growing number of people, I don't know, you can say on this, who um, 
treat LARP as a as one way of um, of essentially fighting, of, of doing competitive fighting. <laughs> and obviously, it's obvious that you're one of those people who takes yeah. the fighting side very seriously. And the role playing side is there, but it's maybe not your priority. Um, that kind of, yes, in a nutshell, yes. Although the different types of LARPs have different emphasis to them, so you will get live action role plays that are mainly to do with um, some sort of political role play or, or some sort of drama in, in the role play, and then you will get LARP systems which are much more to do with the actual fighting. So, for example, um, there is a system um, called Empire, um, which is run by Profound Decisions, and that is more like a Lord of the Rings um, type system, where you, but it has an awful lot of, of a political kind of role playing and all sorts of really interesting mechanisms that bring people together to trade. Um, to have kind of political discussions and to do sorts of um, plan the battles and all sorts of things like that. The fighting element is two really big battles, say 500 or so aside, um, that you'd have on each of the main key days, normally on a, on a Saturday and, and Sunday. So that's one kind of type of, uh, of live role play that has all those different elements. Um, they also run in another event called called Odyssey, which actually has only got one more event to, to go actually in, in August, and that is based around kind of strategic fighting in arenas. So you have all sorts of different um, civilizations, I suppose: um, Egyptians, Phoenicians, Greeks, um, Persians, that are fighting over actually in a, in a on a strategic map over a whole range of different city-states and those battles that are generated on that map are then um, played out if you like in an arena with actual fighters fighting against each other mm -hmm. so that's interesting so yes there's still a political and strategic side but it's a lot more to do with, with fighting and being a hero kind of in the in the arena um, there are other systems which are much, much more fantasy, which, which tend to have a lot more magic uh, and, and spells and things, which I know really is really, really interesting to some people and it also puts a, a, a lot of people off uh, about mm. live role play. And actually, I would say that um, LARP is kind of, uh, up until more recently, I think, is, has been the kind of poor relation if you look at something like um, reenactment uh, and HEMA, which essentially people are getting together because when they were younger, they played some Dungeons and Dragons or saw some really cool films with, 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 with sword fighting in. And they thought, oh, I'd, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do some sword fighting. I'd love to meet up and, and, and camp somewhere and uh, you know meet around the campfire and tell stories and all that sort of thing. And actually just through luck or coincidence or because a friend invited them they've moved off into reenactment or live role play or into <clears throat> HEMA. I think from my point of view one of the things to um, it, it's sometimes difficult when people aren't clear what uh, HEMA is um, they ask so is it like reenactment is it like LARP is it so oh so it's like modern fencing or is it like martial arts and we have to we always have to explain what HEMA is because it's not a mainstream activity and I think um, LARP is a little bit like this in that it's it's not reenactment you and I understand the difference between what uh, someone if someone says I do reenactment or I do LARP we understand what the difference is between those two things or if they say I do SCA um, but actually there's a lot of overlap isn't there because I mean if you're a reenactor you are role-playing you are you are playing a part so in that sense there's a strong similarity with LARP it's that LARP tends to be but we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a minute but yeah. tends to be more fantasy based reenactment <clears throat> tends to be more historical ba historically based in terms of trying to recreate exact uniforms or exact you know costumes from a given time and place um, uh, but even with reenactment it might be more focused on fighting or it might be more focused on living history 
Um, and similarly, there's, there's aspects within LARP. It might be more focused on, you know, magic and fantasy stuff, or it might be more focused on the historical stuff, or it might be more focused on the fighting or more on the acting. Um, and equally within uh, SCA, SCA in my mindset is almost like the bridge between what we commonly think of as reenactment and what we commonly think of <coughs> as LARP. SCA is kind of in the middle, isn't it? Um, but for HEMA people, I think one of the defining things, one of the defining differences, are the type of weapons that we tend to use. So in reenactment, people tend to use a somehow blunted or safer version of the real thing. Um, in SCA, people tend to use rattan sticks to simulate swords and spears and pole axes and whatever. And in LARP, you tend to use a foam latex version. Yeah. Um, how much do you think the different weapons used affects how those different groups of people, if we're just looking at the fighting versions, if we look at fighting reenactors, fighting SEA and fighting LARP people, how do you think the different nature of the weapons changes the perspective of combat reconstruction? Okay. So that's a big old question. It is a big question. <laughs> yeah. um, so I've had um, the, the pleasure actually of of, of doing sport fencing uh, for about 10 years. Uh, this is, incidentally, this is one of Mark's closely guarded <laughs> secrets because for a long time at Fight Camp, I think he was commonly regarded as this LARP guy who came along and beat lots of, lots of the HEMA people in tournaments. But you do have, you do have a sport fencing background uh, as well. I, 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 I predominantly um, live role play um, from, from, from a young age, from about the age of um, 15. But actually, because of my interest in, in combat, um, I really wanted to try a whole range of, of the other things that, that was out there. So just for a second, so what have you done? Just for the record, you've done sport fencing, you've okay. dabbled an SCA? So sport fencing, um, sabre and epee. Uh -huh. uh, SCA for, for two or three years. Um, and had uh, had the had the chance to go out to America and fight in a in a, in a battle out there. Um, some other Eastern martial arts, so some judo, um, um, aikido. Um, then live role play for about twenty eight years now, and with a variety of different weapons. With systems with and... pretty much, yeah, probably fifteen to twenty different live role play systems. Um, and then HEMA, um, with, with the first club that I came along to, was actually Fight Camp. Um, and that, must, that was around 11 years mm. uh, ago mm. or, or so. So, yes, I've... And, and, and you, wrestle, and, and, and you and wrestle a bit for fun. I, well. I, I, do, I do like to wrestle uh, <laughs> as well, it must be said. And, and also a little bit of, of reenactment, but probably reenactment yeah. uh, I've, I've done the least... Mm -hmm. uh, amount of. So to come back to your question in terms of um, the, the differences, mm -hmm. I suppose, from going to all of these different types of events and actually kind of portraying myself as a live action role player, because that's what I've done predominantly, it's interesting some of the reactions y you get from, from different types of people from those, those different activities. Um, from uh, well, those weapons are really, really light, um, and you know you can't hit that quickly with, with steel weapons. Or uh, if it's you know if it's not steel, that doesn't work. Or people in LARP going the other way, saying, uh, well, you know, steel weapons hurt too much. I, I I don't want to do that." So you've got all these kind of different opinions kind of sloshing around. But actually, I feel that there's an awful lot to learn from all of them. And I know that I tend to go into these things with a really open mind and think, what is positive about this different system, this different thing, and what can I learn from it? Mm. And I'm one of these fighters that doesn't tend to practice technique a massive amount. I don't really tend to drill at all and what I tend to do is fight and fight and analyze and fight and do a lot awful but lot the of free sparring. Is the important bit. <laughs> I, I, I think I think it is. I think yeah. in, in, in any of those situations where I have 
um, come across a different weighted weapon or a different type of weapon. Mm. I've had a play with it. I've, I've kind of prototyped with it, if you like. I've had a play and then I've thought to myself, what do I need to do to use this weapon more effectively? What do I need to do um, to use this weapon so that I can win in the environment that has been created for me by this system? So if you're told by the rules that you have to strike with a certain amount of force, with the edge, you know, in certain ways, then you adapt to that. And Absolutely, and I think that, um, that adaption is one of the absolutely key principles of, of, of weapon combat. Mm. If you are unable to adapt to the dynamic environment that you're placed within, then at some point or other, no matter how good you are, you're going to come across a situation that you're going to struggle with. Mm. And if you are theoretically seeing that as a situation that you're using sharp swords and you're unarmoured, it only takes a small mistake where you weren't able to adapt or gather enough information before you close to kind of more deadly distance. Then you could theoretically be dead. Mm. And that kind of breaks one of the fundamental rules of, of kind of sword fighting is... Yeah. Don't, don't get hit. So going going uh, back a step to, to, to the main sort of point there, I think I would like to sort of emphasise for, for the viewers out there, is that um, LARP combat has things to teach, <clears throat> lots of things to teach, and a lot of the fundamentals <clears throat> are exactly the same as HEMA combat or reenactment combat or SEA combat. The fundamentals of <clears throat> you trying to hit someone while not being hit are basically the same whether you're doing sport fencing, kendo, hema, whatever. You know, you can just think of anything where you're trying to hit an opponent and not be hit back. Um, it doesn't matter for a large degree what the weapons are made of. If they're made of foam latex or if they're made of hardwood or they're made of rattan or they're made of synthetic nylon plastic or if they're made of steel, a lot of the considerations, 90% of the considerations are the same. Yes, obviously some weapons move more quickly and behave slightly differently than others, and you have to adapt to those things. But I think one of the most important uh, points that um, Mark touched on there was um, adaptability. So there are some people in any martial art or any sport who you'll find who um, train a lot. They, in our, in our disciplines, spar a lot. But they just spar again and again and again and again, and they don't analyse what mistakes they're doing and what behaviours <clears throat> they're either reinforcing or not taking notice of. And unfortunately to say, I, I, I notice in HEMA a growing number of people who spar a lot but don't seem to improve. I see them maybe once or twice a year and they're staying at the same level, they plateau. And I think it's because they're not getting the guidance or they're not um, enabling themselves to look at what they're doing and improve it. And that's, that's a very difficult thing to do, especially, funnily enough, I think if you're reasonably good. If you're reasonably good and beat most people <coughs> you fence, then a lot of people will just keep doing the same yeah. thing over and over and over again. And unless you're pushed to improve or shown how to improve, um, then, then just sparring by itself isn't the important bit. Um, because you're just repeating activity over and over again. It's the adapt. It's the interpretation of what you're doing, the ability to to step outside of it and and improve what you're doing. So to pick up on a, on a few of those points, in in terms of um, LARP fighting, SCA fighting, even sport, even sport fencing and 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 HEMA, yes, I totally agree. They have more in common than they have differences. Um, contrary to what people have said a whole range of times that oh they're so so different fundamentally you're dealing with quite a lot of the princi martial principles you're dealing with distance timing um, mental focus fitness uh, there's all, all um, 
object meter long objects moving in 3d space the, the underlying fu things fundamentally are similar, yeah. <laughs> they're very very similar that's not to say there aren't some significant differences but fundamentally mm. they are very very similar mm. and that actually probably has uh, in part has been why i've been able to move between these kind of different systems and do very well competitively in in each of them mm -hmm. Now, to pick up on your point with regards to um, being able to adapt, mm. um, if you are sparring lots, I think one of the things that, that people are a little bit afraid, afraid of, in a sense, is, is failing. Actually, really, forget about worrying about failing. If, if you're worrying about failing, then you're likely to inhibit your, your, the learning process. Really be confident in that you're going to make some mistakes. Embrace failure. Failure, if you analyse it, is much more valuable than, than beating an opponent. Especially if you're just beating the same opponent over and over and over again and kind of smiling to yourself. As, as you mentioned, Matt, that's probably the sort of person that isn't pushing themselves out of their comfort zone and probably isn't going to make that much significant kind of improvement in their martial ability. From a personal perspective, what I've always done is when I've started to beat the people around me, normally because I've been the more obsessional about kind of fighting, I've then looked for people in other clubs or I have looked for other systems and I've looked for people that are able to challenge my way of martial thinking or people that are able to beat me. Then I spend time sparring with those people as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I fail, I fail then I start to succeed. He doesn't fail very much. <laughs> I, <laughs> Annoyingly, he really doesn't <laughs> fail very much. I analyse and then I try to integrate those things that I've learnt into my system and then I repeat. Mm. And that process, I think, has meant that I have been on this continual, continual process of, of improvement. Uh, and it's also meant I've, I've met an, an awful lot of really nice people that enjoy in all of those different activities and systems enjoy the things that that i do okay so this so that this is an incredibly long video because we're going to do we're going to do a couple of other videos as well i think um i think that's a good point to wrap up on but i want yeah. to finish with a um question to you and that is um it's the same question but from two different directions what do you think larp combat could <coughs> bring to hema and what do you think uh, how do you think coming into HEMA has influenced or improved your LARP combat? Okay, so first of all, two-part question, how can LARP combat be, be useful, be, it, it, beneficial be, to... be beneficial to people that fight? Um, one of the fundamental things is that because the equipment actually essentially is very safe, you can get bruises, you can get eye injuries, but essentially, in comparison to SCA or HEMA, it's very safe. What that means is you have a lot more freedom without being worried about safety. So you're potentially able to fight for longer, partly because you don't have to wear the restrictive um, safety equipment. Um, you're able to get hit more often because it does it has less damage to you and the forces involved in using a lighter LARP weapon are less so they're going to have less strain on on your joints uh, and your limbs um, a third point is that actually if you're wanting to represent melee combat um, or you're wanting to have battles in bigger groups it allows you a level of safety that you can actually experiment a lot more dynamically and maybe get yourself into situations that if you were using heavier uh, weapons or harder weapons would 
quite likely be, be dangerous. So you have a lot more freedom in missile weapons. And you can bring missile weapons in. Mi and... Missile weapons, yeah. the LARP arrows are, are, are really good. Um, and you can, you can create all sorts of different weapons. Uh, nine foot thrusting spears different shields and all sorts that, that can be that can be set. And, and I have to say you know we're already whether HEMA people recognize it or not if you stop for a second and think we do actually have some HEMA weapons which are not dissimilar to LARP weapons in HEMA we have padded swords for many years many groups particularly armor in America used padded swords they've never really gained traction in the UK much um, but um, they you can get padded sabers from companies like Spez um, and indeed, the spears that we use, whilst they have, they're made of a rattan or wood shaft, do generally have a padded or rubber head of some kind. Yeah. They're not that dissimilar. We're still dealing with similar issues of how to make certain types of weapons safe for the type of combat that we do. Because you can't just use a blunt steel-headed steel spear and expect it to be in any way safe, because it won't be. I, I mean, it's essentially, I see the LARP weapons as, as, a, as a weapon simulator. Yeah, so they, and a blunt sword is also a weapon yeah, simulator, so, it's not a sharp sword, so it's yes, a blunt sword. So yes, they are weapons that are typically used in LARP, but there's no reason why they can't be used as a training tool, mm. maybe with beginners, maybe for doing melee combat, maybe to show certain technique. They can be a really useful tool. And the point about melee combat is obviously for anybody who knows about my event fight camp it should be patently clear that I recognise that melee or group combats is a gaping great hole in HEMA's skill set. And we spend all this time working from treatises but the treatises don't tell us about how groups of people fought other groups of people. And um, this is a, an area where both reenactment, well, in fact reenactment, SCA and LARP all deal with massed combat. HEMA generally does not. And I'm a big fan of bringing massed combat into HEMA because if we're professing to you know, bring back lost martial arts um, using history, archaeology and you know, the documentary sources, we need to be looking at group combat as well. And that's something where experience from people who've got many years in reenactment, SCA and LARP can help HEMA people to do that and can open up that as an avenue for exploration. And apart from anything, it's awesome fun. It's, and that, that is ultimately why we're all doing these activities is because they're fun. We're not doing it because we're expecting to go to war with swords tomorrow. Um, so to, to, answer, last to, point, to, yeah. answer that, to answer that last question, so what has HEMA brought to kind of me uh, as, a, as a fighter. Um, what, was, what was quite refreshing actually, because coming to fight camp for the first time, um, there, was, there was people who, that were looking at me thinking, well, this is a bit strange. There's a, there's a live role play fighter uh, kind of here. We don't really know much about, about LARP and you know, what's that all about. But what was really nice was there was a whole range of, of people, including Matt, that was really open-minded to it. And that allowed me to then um, make new friends but get immersed in, in, in the HEMA and actually start to explore some of the historical technique. And learning some of the historical technique actually reinforced some of the stuff that I had learnt pretty much myself through the different activities I'd done. But it also taught me a number of other martial principles that have fed back into and informed me and made me a, a, a better fighter. And actually, People within LARP, uh, a number of people that are interested in the combat, are really, really interested in a number of the different manuals and different forms of, of fighting um, from HEMA. So actually, I, I feel actually that there is a coming together. It feels like there's a little, mm -hmm. little bit of a coming together between reenactment, um, live roleplay, and, and HEMA. And I think that's right. There's, a, there's an awful lot of common ground. I absolutely agree, yeah, and, and I think that there's there's stuff to be learned in both directions, uh, and hopefully that will continue. And you know, I've said all sorts of things in the past about um, historical fencing versus sport fencing and these kind of things, but ultimately, they they're all part of the study of historical fighting systems. They're just different ways of approaching that subject, um, and they've all got things. They've all got experience. Uh, that they can share with each other and, and give benefit to, to the others with. Anyway, Mark, thank you very much. Pleasure. We're going to talk a bit more, but um, for now, cheers, folks. Bye-bye. 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.